Okay, so when you picture our solar system, what comes to mind, probably that, you know, neat flat disk, right? Mm -hmm. Planets all lined up, orbiting the sun like clockwork. Yeah. It's the image we all get from, like, textbooks. Yeah, it's the standard model. But what if that flat picture is just, well, one slice of the reality? What if our solar system is way more complex, uh, three-dimensional, with structures reaching way above and below that familiar plane? Interesting. So today, we're going to get a deep dive to maybe shift that perspective a bit. Right. We're going to explore the vertical structure based on some really eye-opening sources. It's not just about how far out things go, but how up and down. Okay, let's unpack this. Yeah, let's do it. And what's fascinating here, I think, is how this journey really changes how you see our place in it all. Right. It shows the solar system isn't this um, isolated island. It's actually immersed in this huge, layered, cosmic environment. Constantly interacting. Exactly. Constantly interacting, being shaped by interstellar stuff around it. Way more dynamic than we usually think. Okay, so let's start with what we do know or think we know. The flatness. Mm. We see the planets, Earth too, in this really flat disk. Yeah. Why? Why so flat? What do our sources say? Well, that alignment, we often call it the ecliptic plane. It's not just random. It's basically a leftover from how the whole system was born. Okay. Imagine this giant spinning cloud of gas and dust billions of years ago. As gravity pulled it together, the rotation naturally caused it to flatten out. Ah, like spinning pizza dough. Exactly like pizza dough. That's a great analogy. And the planets formed within that flattened disk. So it's super practical for us, you know, as a reference point, we say above or below the plane. Mm, right. But you have to remember, in the grand scheme of the universe, there isn't really an absolute up or down. It kind of messes with our human sense of direction, doesn't it? It totally does. Okay. okay. Pizza dough works for the inner bits. But what happens way out? Past Neptune, past the Kuiper belt even. Where does that flat picture just stop being the main story? Ah, uh, right. That's where you run into the Oort cloud. Or right. where we think it is. Theorized, right. Exactly. It's this theorized, absolutely massive spherical shell. We're talking trillions of icy objects, maybe stretching out. Get this, 100,000 astronomical units. Whoa. And an astronomical unit is Earth-Sun distance. So 100,000 times that. You got it. It's huge. And crucially, it's not a disk. It's a sphere. A giant bubble surrounding everything else. So that's the true three-dimensional boundary, in a way. In a sense, yes. It's this ancient reservoir where long-period comets come from, holding material from the very beginning. Its sheer scale and spherical shape really contrast with that flat inner system. It shows you the vertical scale we're talking about. Okay, so flat disk inside, giant icy sphere way, way out. Moving outwards, layer by layer, what's protecting us more immediately? What's our sort of shield against the galaxy itself? That would be the heliosphere. Heliosphere, okay. Think of it as another bubble, but this one's actively generated by our sun. It's formed by the solar wind, that constant stream of charged particles the sun shoots out. And its job is protection. Pretty much, yeah. It shields us from a lot of harmful galactic cosmic rays, interstellar dust, that sort of thing. But here's the interesting part. It's not a perfect sphere. Oh. Why not? Because our whole solar system is moving. We're traveling through interstellar space pretty fast. So the heliosphere gets uh, compressed on the side facing our direction of travel. And it's stretched out behind us. Right, so it's shaped almost like a comet's tail, but huge. That's a good way to picture it. It's this dynamic boundary constantly shifting where the sun's influence meets the interstellar medium. It really shows that ongoing exchange with the galaxy. So it's not just a shield. It's like our bow wave. That's How? wild. Is its shape always changing then? And what is it pushing against? What's right outside that bubble? Exactly. It's like a bow wave. And yes, its shape responds to what we're moving through. Yeah. Right now, the heliosphere is plowing through something called the local interstellar cloud. A cloud Whoop. in space. Yeah. Think of it as a slightly denser patch of interstellar gas and dust. Our sun's just passing through it on its journey around the Milky Way. So we're currently inside this cloud. We are, and this cloud interacts with the heliosphere, influencing its shape and properties. It really drives home that we're not isolated, we're embedded in this uh, constantly changing galactic neighborhood. Right, that puts our bubble in a totally different light. Let's keep going outwards. If we go beyond this local interstellar cloud, yeah, what's next? Here's where it gets really interesting, apparently. Right. Beyond that cloud, we find ourselves inside something even bigger. The local bubble. The local bubble sounds empty. It is. It's this huge region of space, hundreds of light years across, with unusually low density of gas and dust, a vast cavity. Why is it so empty? 
Well, the leading theory is that it was carved out millions of years ago by a series of supernova explosions. Supernovae. Star explosions blew this bubble. That's the idea. Multiple powerful explosions basically swept the area clean, creating this void. So our local galactic neighborhood is unusually empty because of these ancient events. Wow. So it's like we're in a protective pocket created by ancient catastrophes. Kind of, yeah. It has denser walls further out, made of the gas and dust pushed aside by the explosions. It shapes the whole structure of the interstellar medium nearby. Incredible. Okay, so let's recap. Flat disk, hmm. huge spherical Oort cloud, then the dynamic heliosphere pushing through the local interstellar cloud, and all of that is inside this giant ancient local bubble void. You got it. Layer upon layer. Given all these layers, spheres, bubbles, voids, does up and down even mean anything anymore? Not in any absolute universal way, no. That's really a key takeaway. So it's all relative. Completely. Up or down, north or south, only makes sense relative to some agreed upon reference plane, like the ecliptic for the planets or the galactic plane for the Milky Way. Huh. It really changes how you think about our address in the universe, doesn't it? Mm. If direction is relative, our cosmic home isn't fixed. It's more like, well, it depends on your perspective. Right. It dictates how we map things, how we understand what we're seeing. Exactly. Perspective is everything in astronomy. OK, final step. Let's zoom out completely. How does our solar system, with all these vertical layers we've just explored, fit into the grand structure of our entire galaxy, the Milky Way? So what does this all mean, big picture? Well, it means our solar system, even with its Oort cloud and heliosphere, is just a tiny speck, a single system embedded within the Milky Way's incredibly complex structure. And the galaxy itself isn't just a flat disk either, right? Not at all. The Milky Way has a warp disk. It's not perfectly flat. It has a central bulge, those beautiful spiral arms where stars are forming, and then this huge, roughly spherical halo surrounding everything. A halo? Made of what? Mostly very old stars, clusters of stars, and a lot of that mysterious dark matter we still don't fully understand. Wow. So this whole picture situates our solar system within this incredibly dynamic galactic environment. We're constantly being influenced by gravity, by star formation happening elsewhere, by supernova shock waves, by flows of gas. It's layers upon layers of complexity far beyond just our little neighborhood. What an incredible journey we've taken, really. From that flat diagram we started with, mm -hmm. out through the planets, then the huge Oort cloud sphere, navigating the heliosphere's bubble as it pushes through the local interstellar cloud, and finding ourselves inside the vast local bubble. Mm -hmm. And all of that just one tiny part of the Milky Way's warped dynamic structure. It's mind-bending. It really is. And understanding this vertical dimension, this galactic context, it gives you a much richer, uh, more nuanced appreciation for our place, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. You're not just living on a flat disk. We're part of this interconnected, multidimensional, always changing cosmic ecosystem. Always moving, always interacting. A cosmic ecosystem. I like that. So thinking about all this after a deep dive today, hmm. what does it really mean for you, for anyone listening, to realize that life here on Earth isn't happening in isolation, that mm -hmm. we exist as this extraordinary phenomenon, but one that's deeply embedded within this complex, dynamic, sometimes even chaotic cosmic environment?